Hi, I'm Liz from G Mum's Place and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about Stone Creek, Arizona by Linda Lale Miller. Um, Stone Creek is a series and I'm going to do a review of the first book and in the next video I'll do a review of the second. So, the first book is The Man from Stone Creek. There was trouble in Haven, Arizona and Ranger Sam O'Balavan was determined to sort it out. Badge and gun hidden, he arrived posing as the new school teacher and discovered his first task was to bring the rough ranchers' children under control. So he started with a call on Maddie Chancellor, the local postmistress and older sister of a young boy in need of discipline. It never occurred to Sam that Maddie would be a graceful woman whose prim and proper stance didn't match the fire in her eyes. Working undercover to capture rustlers and train robbers was a job that had always kept him isolated and his heart firmly in check. Until now. But there was something about Maddie that tempted him down a path he'd sworn he would never travel. Okay, now I'll read the first paragraph. Haven, Arizona Territory, Fall of 1903. The pint-sized culprits, heretofore gathered around the well, scattered for the brush as soon as Sam O'Balavan rode into the schoolyard on his nameless horse, but he'd seen enough to know they were up to no good. He caught glimpses of bowl-cut hair, denim trousers and chambray shirts as they fled. Pigtails too, and a flash of red calico, bright as a cardinal rousted from the low branches of a white oak tree in winter. With a disgusted shake of his head, Sam reined in and dismounted, leaving the gelding to stand untethered while he strode toward the scene of recent mischief. A part of his mind stayed behind with the animal. It was newly acquired, that horse, and the two of them had yet to form a proper acquaintance. All during the long ride south from his ranch just outside Flagstaff, mm, Flagstaff, if you rode a horse down to Flagstaff in Melbourne, you'd probably get arrested. And Flagstaff. He'd been too busy cogitating on the complexities of this new assignment to consider much of anything else, going over Major John Blackstone's orders again and again in his head, sorting and sifting, weighing and measuring. That's what Sam did. He always weighed and measured. Now, when Sam arrived at the schoolhouse, he found the previous school teacher had been hogtied and hooked on the, the rope down the well. So here's this poor teacher hanging down the well. Sam rescues him, cleverly, and catches Maddie's little brother, Terran Chancellor. And that's how um, sorry, Sam and Maddie meet, because he goes to the mercantile and introduces himself and tells Maddie that um, Terran needs discipline. So the next day, Sam goes back and does some shopping in the mercantile because he forgot the first time. And he happens to run into Mungo and Undine Donoher, who are the richest people in town. And Undine, the wife, um, is young and pretty, and she invites Sam to dinner. And Mungo is a fair bit older, and he invites Maddie. So Sam and Maddie are invited to dinner at the Donohers. And Maddie goes crook at Sam about it. So here's what she says. Maddie knotted her hands in her apron so she wouldn't box Sam O'Bellivan's ears. You're new in Haven and you obvi obviously have the sensibilities of a hitching post, so I'll tell you. Mr. Donoher is a hard man. He's vengeful, he's rich, and when folks get on his bad side, they tend to meet with sudden misfortune. 
I do appreciate your concern, Miss Chancellor, but I'm not afraid of that old coot. All right, a little bit further on, Sam decides to have a bath in the schoolhouse. And Maddie walks in on him. So this is what happens. He poured the simmering contents of the kettle into the tub and then lit a lamp in the schoolroom and appropriated the last of the day's drinking water, adding that to the bar so he wouldn't parboil himself, and took off his gum belt. He was naked as his first birthday, smoking a cheroot and longing for his own comforts up at Stone Creek, when the inside door suddenly sprang open. Sam had left his 45 on the table while, when he undressed for the occasion, and it was a good thing. If it had been close at hand, he'd have shot Maddie Chancellor on the threshold before he realised who she was. You've got to do something, she blurted. Sam almost swallowed the cheroot, and then he had to wait for his gizzard to shinny back down his throat and settle into its right place. His towel draped over the side of the copper tub Maddie had sold him at a premium price, and he didn't reach for it. If she saw more than was proper and embarrassed herself, well, it would serve her right for barging into a man's place of residence without so much as a knock or a rousing hail from the doorstep. The cheroot made a sizzling noise as he dunked it in his bath water. She froze in the midst of revelation and slapped a hand over her eyes. Land sakes, she gasped. You're not dressed. Sam relished her discomfort since it was so richly deserved and for some less honourable re honourable reasons too. I don't usually bathe with my clothes on, Miss Chancellor, he replied, and suffice it to say, I wasn't expecting company. And the story goes on from there. It is a wonderful read. Um, Linda Lau Miller's characters are very strong. They are incredibly well crafted. In this book also, there is a train wreck. There are train robbers, Mexican federal gold, who everybody seems to be after. There are two sex scenes, um, nothing too explicit. Um, all in all, it's a great read and definitely worth the time spent on it. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Please smash the like button and there's a link below if you would like to try reading the book on for Amazon. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to upload this next video in a couple of days. Thank you.